For this particular phase two study, in fact, uh, it's an ongoing study, also a multi-center study that will involve uh, patients not only in Hong Kong, but also the Greater Bay Area in China, um, as well as in Singapore. And we'll be expanding to Malaysia as well. So uh, for this particular study, we actually included uh, 98 patients for the interim analysis. We had 105 patients diagnosed with acute prostatic leukemia in our center, with seven patients having deaths uh, due to the disease before treatment could be initiated. And in these 98 uh, patients recruited, all of them achieved a complete remission uh, after treatment. And these patients actually received this regimen, which is entirely oral, right? It's an oral arsenic trioxide with uh, atra and ascorbic acid as a combination. Chemotherapy would only be given in patients who had a leukocytosis more than 10 at presentations. So roughly around less than 30% of these patients actually required a brief period of chemotherapy. And the subsequent consolidation maintenance phases were all chemotherapy free. And these were all outpatient based. So these patients uh, only required first three weeks of induction in hospital and subsequently all the treatment was outpatient based. And that's very important uh, uh, for the current uh, uh, treatment or, or landscape in these patients uh, with APL. Uh, as far as molecular responses were concerned, at eight weeks, we observed a, a more than free lock reduction in the PML RARA uh, mutant transcripts. And at 24 weeks, all patients would achieve a complete molecular response. Uh, with the exception, we had one patient who relapsed after completion two years of maintenance treatment. And that particular patient actually had a very rare mutation at the PML B2 domain. It's the A216V uh, mutations at the B2 domain that conferred a partial resistance to arsenic trioxide. And that particular patient unfortunately succumbed to refractory APL. And um, so that was the only relapse. So overall, we had an overall survival and re relapse-free survival exceeding 98%. So it's a remarkable result. And adverse events-wise, the commonest uh, non-hematologic toxicity was uh, um, actually mildly raised liver enzymes occurring around 50% uh, of patients, but then mostly were reversible. There were no great free for hepatotoxicity. And um, the other non-hematologic toxicity was headache occurring around a third of patients, all grade one to two. And there were no treatment discontinuations due to toxicity. So it's a very encouraging results and the study is ongoing in Asia as a multi-center study.